not many times, but on those occasions when he would ask me, could I pass on something to Mr. Dillon? I may have said to him, I'll try and pass it along, a poor words to that effect. Where did this interview take place between yourself and Mr. Dillon? Um, it was over dinner uh, at a restaurant called Il Cielo here in Beverly Hills. And do you recall when it took place? August 5th, 1988, in the evening, sometime around 7, 8 o'clock, something like that. Thank you. And was anyone else present at the table with you? Um, yes, Elliot Mintz, who was uh, at the time Bob Dylan's publicist. Said before, it sounded like the tour had maybe kept him from writing as much as he had in the past. James Damiano versus Sony Music Entertainment Incorporated and Bob Dylan. And the case number is 95-4795. We're here at the offices of Parcher and Hayes, located at 500 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. And this is a deposition of Tony Tiller. This time, counsel will identify themselves. Stephen Kramer for the point. Maureen Snyder and Ruth Lott for Sony Music Entertainment, Inc. and Bob Dylan. At this time, I have the court reporter swear on the witness. You have to raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear on the testimony you're about to give that you will tell the whole truth? So help you not. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Mr. Teller, good morning. Uh, you are employed by whom, sir? Sony Music. And uh, how long have you been employed by Sony Music? For nine years on staff, ten years if you count approximately a year and two months as temp slash per diem. I was promoted to associate director of marketing services. Did you ever have in your office any compilations of any sort of Mr. Damiano's songs that you kept on your bookshelf? When you say compilation, what? Uh, Folder, binder, book, tablet, Printed material. material, anything. Printed material, yes. Okay, and draw, if you would, so I can picture it, and the jury can picture it, a verbal picture of your office, and where, and then, if you do that, where the material rested. I'm sorry to interrupt you, so, we're, so the record's clear. Are we talking about, because you may have had more than one office over the course of the years, so you might want to... Sure, if you had more than one office, take me through it. Okay, when I first started as a temp, I moved from office to office to cover poor people who were on vacation. So okay, just to, to, to speed it up a touch, perhaps, um, if you would, Mr. Tiller, limit yourself to the offices in which these materials were ever located. Okay, my first office, I had the door would be, say, in that corner. Over here, I had two file cabinets, a table, a small table to my left attached to my desk, an art desk in that corner, a bookcase right next to that, and next to that, a file cabinet. Okay, thank you. Uh, the book that Jim had given me would be on that bookcase. To your right? To my right. Okay. And what year did you receive that book initially? I don't recall. Okay, and what did it have in it? It had a bunch of songs, or a bunch of, I guess, well, he called them songs, so I called them songs, but they were words written in verse form. Did it, was it in a binder, a folder? It was in a binder. Like a three-ring binder? A uh, three-ring binder. And where is that today? I do not know. When was the last time you saw it? When we were in the build, CBS building at 52 West 52nd Street. And you're telling us and the jury you don't know what happened to them, those materials of songs or words? Uh, no, I do not. Just disappeared. Well, 
when we moved from that building approximately four or five years ago, as I explained to Jim, I had, we were to pack our own desks. We were pressed to work until the day we moved, pretty much. And the movers came in and packed everything else. There were things that were left behind. And when, so could you pinpoint, Mr. Tiller, what year Mr. Damiano's book of songs or words disappeared? Jack, your you, office. Did, you did not say disappeared. You're mischaracterizing his testimony. You did not say they disappeared. So we... Well, if you mischaracterize the testimony... Oh, that's an exception to our stipulation? So that means during Mr. Mintz's deposition every time you... Did the... Did the... Did Mr. Damiano's songs, Mr. Tiller, disappear? Could I have you rephrase that? Sure. What happened to his songs that had been on your shelf for how long? One and a half, possibly two years. Okay. The songs or that binder without... That, the, that binder disappeared, did it not? They were left in the building when we moved. Did you ever go back to retrieve it or to ask where it was? No, I did not. There were... And is that building still owned by CBS? Yes, it is. Okay. And that's CBS's headquarters, yes? Yes. And all we know now and all the jury knows now is that you don't have it, correct? That is correct. And Sony does not have it, to your knowledge. Sony does not have it. Right. And if we went to your office today, where your office used to be on 52nd Street, did that? No, I did not. And all we know now, and all the jury knows now, is that you don't have it, correct? That is correct. And Sony does not have it, to your knowledge. Sony does not have it. Right. And if we went to your office today, where your office used to be on 52nd Street, at CBS's headquarters. Did you ever tell Mr. Damiano that uh, his materials had been lost or left behind or disappeared? Yes, they did. And what did he say? I can't recall exactly what he said. I did tell him I was sorry. Counsel, this is the second witness in a row, literally, who received materials from the plaintiff comprising his one or more of his songs where the materials have disappeared. Whether you want to use the word disappeared, lost, destroyed, evaporated, whatever you want to, whatever phrase you want to use. And I want the record to note that, that this is the second witness in a row. Mr. Mintz testified that he destroyed Mr. Damiano's fax materials. And no, not only did he destroy them, he went further. He said he shredded them. Mm -hmm. And now Mr. Tiller is saying that the binder of materials of songs that Mr. Tiller received got lost, disappeared, don't exist. And I want that to be clear that that has occurred.